Oh, hi. Yeah, um, I just had a quick Bible question I was wondering if someone could help me with. Sure. Okay, do you have a minute? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, well, um, I was reading um, in First Chronicles 17.20. Um, it's talking about God, you know, so it says, O oh, Yahweh, there is none like you, nor is there any God besides you according to all that we have heard with our ears. And I mean, there's there's a bunch of other verses that say there's no one like Jehovah. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, but I was reading about Jesus uh, in the online library. It's called What is Jesus Like? It says that um, he is exactly like the Father because he hung out with him for billions of years. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, those verses say that no one is like Jehovah. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. I see. I see. Um, are, are you, um, are you a believer that Jesus is the same as Jehovah? Um, of the same essence or nature, yes. Not the same in person as, you know, historically Christians have believed. Not the same person. Okay. Although I notice your yes. publications sometimes try to say that Christians believe they're the same person. I, I'm i only familiar with the historic majority teaching, you know. I think that's a heretical view. But I know they, they try to paint it like that, which is really interesting. Okay. What was your question then? Well, um, the Bible says there is no one like Jehovah. And since, you know, you all define Jehovah as just the Father, and yet the publication says that Jesus is just like the Father because he hung out with him for billions of years. Right, right. Um, you know, uh, just like a person who spends a lot of time, a father, sometimes will say a son is, you know, trip off the old block. Mm -hmm. he'll, he'll share a lot of personality um, you know, when Jesus prayed to his father in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was um, he was looking to um, um, talk to his father for strength. You know, do you, do you remember that? Sure, but what's what? How does that relate? Well, in other words, he's talking to a separate person. Right. Did, did you hear what father. I said in the beginning that the historic Orthodox view, held by the majority? of Christian denominations is that there's one God existing in three persons. That there, the unity is a complex unity. Um, I see. Yeah. It, what I, and what I, I said I is the reason... I don't, the I, don't reason think you're, I, don't, I don't think you're calling for a question. I think you are, would like to just uh, speak about this. If you believe the way you believe and you're happy with it, uh, we have no problem with that. Yeah, uh, we are very happy with serving. I, I, and I notice Jehovah. you keep saying that you keep saying you you when I when I said that the majority historic position is three persons sharing the same divine nature as one God. Um, you just repeated modalism because they repeat that in their publications so many times. Be you know what that's called? It's called a straw man. It's very easy to prove untrue, right? We agree on that, that the father and son aren't the same person. And, you know, the publications use the same arguments that Orthodox Christians use against that, that heresy called modalism. But then you repeated it again. See, they re repeat that so many times. In the literature, what did, what did what did we repeat again? You repeated sure. modalism, like you were trying to. After I already said, the historic position is three distinct persons sharing the same divine nature. You just repeated what an argument uh, well, for modalism. You 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 acted like because you said, well, Jesus prayed to the Father, so that shows they're not the same person. When I had just said, there's very very few that believe that it was condemned as a heresy as one of the first actual heretical teachings in the ancient church but but you're just you just repeated that see because they 
repeat have that so many times. God? Have you do you pray to God? I pray to God. I pray to the is Father that, and to the Son. Com- is there something mm-hmm. complex about that? I don't, I don't understand. Well, Christians I, pray I can to can you, talk you to a, Jesus a, also. A, I, I understand. Uh-huh. You have a, you have your firm beliefs, and uh, continue to you know whatever you believe in. Go ahead. We're not. You know, when we talk to people, we like to talk to people who would like to reason on it more. Uh huh. Oh, I would like to reason like on it more. A, it doesn't sound like that. But ha- but I appreciate your thoughts. No, I, 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 but I do sense that you believe what you believe, and and uh, I don't think you're looking for answers. I think. You're oh, you you <laughs> you can read hearts. <laughs> okay, you can read hearts. I guess. Okay. Well, thanks for talking. Anyway. Have um, a good I was just doing God Bye-bye. bless. Witnessing. Do you have a minute? Probably do. Great. Can I share a scripture with you? Sure can. (laughs) What? What? Yeah. Well, I I don't really know Melissa. It's not my name, but. (laughs) Okay. Um, yeah. So this scripture is Colossians one thirteen, and it says. Oh, this was real interesting. You know, you didn't call the kingdom one, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind. Um. So it's. Well, sounds like you're in a great mood today anyways, right? Yeah, you're doing very well, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't really do anything. (laughs) But anyway, this scripture said, um, for he has delivered us from the domain of dark. Who is this? (laughs) Christine. What was your name? No, Christine who? Well, you don't know me. I just have a phone witnessing ministry talking about the Lord and the Bible, you know. You called the Kingdom Hall. You're more than welcome to come here. We'll be going back to the meetings on Sunday. We are encouraging all to use a mask when you come. So, can I share this scripture with you? Uh, you could a little bit later. I'm actually cleaning right now. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I, I think I read on the website about cleaning the hall. You know, they have that no, website you can read. No, that wouldn't be it. We wouldn't have had that on the website anywhere. Oh, yeah. It was talking about the things that qualify as sacred service. And that's one oh, of them. okay. Well, now you're making some sense. Yeah. yeah that's true. That is true. Yeah. And, you know, I noticed that all the things that qualify for sacred service have to do with building up the Watchtower organization. You know, like just your everyday life, most Christians believe is sacred service as well. But they don't, they say it's not. That was a really interesting article. Well, good. I'm glad you liked it. Okay, well, check out Colossians 1.13, and, you know, I just wanted to see if you've been transferred from darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son. Interesting thought. Yeah. Have a wonderful day. Okay. God bless um, you. It's about Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me grab my Bible. Um. Sorry, we're just in between our English and our Spanish um, service, so there's people uh, in the background. Oh, yeah, I can hear that. (laughs) Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. By this undeserved kindness, you have been saved through your faith. This is not of your own doing. Rather, it is a gift. It is God's gift. No, it is not a result of work. So that no one should have grounds for boasting. Oh, okay. Well, um, I've got it here in the New King James, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So, I mean, my question is, I was reading some stuff on the website about all the different requirements. Um, to gain paradise on earth, and it really involves a lot of works. Yeah, um, but you know, it's it's the type of work that it comes with appreciation and love for God. So the same as how, you know, when you, you know somebody, you love someone like your parents, it's easy to get to, to, to listen to them. You start to understand why they tell you what they tell you, that there's a reason, a rationale behind it. And then there's moments, too, where they tell you things you don't understand at first, but you trust them, you have a relationship, you love them, so you start to accept it. And then as you get older, you realize, oh, that's why 
that was the reason behind it. So it's similar, you know, as you come to know God and, and get an appreciation and the love for him. So at first, it, it does just seem like a lot of list of, of different things. But it that's it why is it's so yeah. to, to build that relationship. Well, I guess according to Ephesians two, eight and nine, it's actually contrasting works with faith and it says that you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves that salvation which occurred at a point in time and is complete is a gift so it seems like from what I'm reading on the website that um, the gift is the opportunity to earn paradise on earth because I see all these requirements and um, I mean one of them is to obey God's laws and it plainly says in Romans that no one does. That no, I'm so sorry, that no one what? No one obeys God's laws. That the law is, uh, in other verses, says it's the law is a tutor to lead us to Christ because it reveals our sin. Mm-hmm. So it, it, the New Testament does, doesn't teach keeping God's laws as a requirement of, of paradise or salvation. Where, where did you gather that in your reading? Um, Romans, the book of Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, the Gospel of John talks about faith in Christ for salvation. It doesn't mention an organization. It says that, you know, he who, that faith in Christ is salvation. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Right. I mean, you know, to, to say once saved, always saved. I, I didn't say that. Contrary. No. Yeah, I didn't say that. And true faith issues in changed life because in the New Covenant, it talks about our heart of flesh, our heart of stone being made into a heart of flesh by the Holy Spirit. But that's interesting because I know you all aren't in the New Covenant. So, you know, the Holy Spirit and that change is really the enablement of the Christian life. It's not just a... Um, outside laws, you know, it's from inside out. It cha- it's a change from inside out when you are born again. But um, anyways, I mean, another verse is, well, Romans chapter 4 contrasts grace and works too. Romans eleven six says, and if it is by grace, it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. See? Right. You know, we, we think about other verses, such as First Timothy 2, 3, and 4, where it talks about how, um, what, what is exactly God's will. It says that it is His will that all sorts of people should be saved and come to an accurate knowledge of truth. And so, in order to be saved, you know, it links having knowledge, accurate knowledge, and how do we show that accurate knowledge through our work? And then really how that's linked with our salvation as well. I, I guess in the New Testament, though, the the accurate knowledge, if you want to use that expression, um, I know in another verse they changed accurate knowledge to knowing the Father and the Son. They, they changed it back to, um, you know, standard translations, which is really interesting. I think they use that accurate knowledge thing to try to connotate that that means studying with Jehovah's Witnesses. But, um, you know, the knowledge that we need is of the person of Christ, who he is, and the work of Christ, what he has done for us. You know, it doesn't mean know uh, everything, what revelation means, or know uh, dates and things like that. You know, whatever they happen to be saying at the time, Um, you know, so that's interesting. But, yeah, I mean, how do you, uh, James, it says in the book of James that if you break one of God's laws, you have um, violated all of the law. Uh-huh. Were you were you calling to have a, a discussion with me or to try to help teach me something? Oh, both. I, don't you learn from people back and forth? You know, I'm learning from your um, thoughts on it. Understood. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I am going to get going. Um, if you have another question, though, feel free to call us back. Okay. We all have, we are having in-person meetings now, so okay. our English is at 7. Um, okay. Is on Sunday, well, at 10 a.m. salvation by grace through faith is...
much more joyful than the watchtower system that they put forth, which, uh, you know, involves a lot of slaving for their organization. But thanks thanks for talking. God bless you. Yeah, I just have a quick Bible question I was wondering if someone could help me with. I just have a quick Bible question. Do you have a minute? Oh, sure. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, it sounds like you got a lot going on there. Oh, we just, we just uh, put our meeting here this morning at 1 o'clock. Oh, okay. Um, well, uh -huh. it's about um, Acts 16, 30, and 31. Uh -huh. It says, um, it's when Paul and Silas were in prison, you know, and they were delivered supernaturally. So it's about um, the jailer, you know, the keeper of the prison. But it says, um, and he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. And I was just wondering why he puts it down to um, faith, you know, in, in the person and work of Christ. Um, I'm sure they were witnessing to him and, you know, were singing praises about Jesus and stuff. Um, why doesn't he mention you have to join the organization and you have to preach, and you have to take in knowledge for, like, a long time. They were baptized that very day. Uh, uh, let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, are you playing with the website, jw.org website? Oh, that's just a Bible verse. Oh, you mean all those requirements yeah. for paradise? Uh, yeah, that's in their books. You know, it's, it's, it is on the website. There's four requirements in the book, um, How to Live Forever on Paradise. Oh, oh, yeah. If you go there, uh -huh. if you can uh, you look for me, come on, ask questions, uh, ask your questions to that, that particular scripture. If you go there and do a look up on that, it'll give you more information. Oh, I'm, I'm asking you what you think about it, though. Uh-huh, yes. Uh-huh. What, what's your thought on it? Uh, I, I said what is that what it says, sir. You know, oh, okay. So people could be saved without joining the Watchtower? Oh, sure. You can. The only way you can be saved is on Lord, Lord, Lord Jehovah and also knowing Jesus Christ. Oh, not that's not what they say. They say you have to get in the Ark of Salvation, which is the organization. Oh, okay. Do you, are you new? Excuse me now? Are, are you new studying or something? Uh, no, I'm I'm a oh, oh, you don't you don't know that they say uh, to survive Armageddon, you must join the organization and advocate it by preaching and um, uh, things like that. No, I'm not familiar with that one. No, you have to show me the scripture on that one. Well, there isn't one, but but that's what I can show you their literature about it. You want to uh, see it? No, I just I'm about a scripture. No, I'm about a scripture. Yeah, I know there isn't any scripture that you have to join the Watchtower organization. Yeah, there, there isn't. I, I, I know there isn't. I, but I'm, I'm asking you, why do they teach that then? They say it's all I'm Bible not, based. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah. Oh, could, could we uh, talk again sometime? Oh, uh, well, you, you're calling, you're calling the Kingdom Hall. This is the Kingdom Hall. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. You, well, you're supposed to be advocating their views, uh, which is to. Uh, no, not, uh, not at this time. I can't. Not at this time. Hope you don't have a meeting. <laughs> well, you know that one of the requirements is to be associated with God. What? I got to go on the platform. Oh, oh my. Well, I hope you you tell them that Jesus is sufficient for salvation when you're preaching today. Call me sometime. Okay. I'm not, I won't be able to do that. I'm at the kingdom hall. But I mean, you know, some other time, anytime. You got my number on there. All right. God bless you. Bye.